Well, good morning, everybody. <coughs> Welcome to St Mary's Vicarage on this, the uh, almost lost the track of the days now. We're on the 28th of April, 28th of April, Tuesday, 28th of April. Uh, welcome. Uh, good morning, Danny. Good morning, uh, Annie and Mike. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, John. Lovely to see you all. Good morning, Gemma. Uh, good morning, Peter. Good morning, Paul. Lovely to see you all. So here we are, uh, Tuesday morning. I never thought I would be pleased or say uh, that it, I'm really pleased it's it's raining. Uh, good morning, Bill. Good morning, John. Um, <coughs> love to see you, Annie. Good morning, Graham. Uh, <coughs> good to see you all. Uh, good morning, Damien. So as I said, I, I never thought I'd say um, I'm really pleased to see it's it's raining, but I'm uh, I'm pleased to see it's raining on three counts. Um, Firstly, uh, I'm pleased to see it's raining because sitting here in my study, I, I'm very privileged. For those of you who don't know Handley Vicarage, um, the church in Handley is right up on a hill. Uh, the village is sort of on a hill and the church is at the highest point on the, uh, in the village. And um, the new vicarage um, is built, I say new, it's sort of probably 1960s, I think, uh, 50s or 60s, um, is built right next to the church up on the hill. So <clears throat> we have absolutely um, spectacular views of the surrounding countryside and the village. We're very privileged to live up the top here. Um, so as I look out of my uh, both bedroom windows and my office window, um, and I see all the beautiful countryside, I see it's pouring with rain. So it, it um, dampens my desire to uh, um, flee and get out into the countryside. So um, I'll be quite happy to sit in my uh, office and study today doing various bits and pieces uh, as the rain comes on. Um, <clears throat> the second reason is um, uh, the gardens. I think all of our gardens really need a, a water. Uh, Kate and I were in the garden yesterday and um, Kate's been doing some fantastic gardening. I mean, she really is a the green fingered one, I just take instruction. Though I did cut the grass yesterday, I did cut the two lawns. And um, she's been doing loads and loads of gardening, but it's ha having to be watering a lot and everything was looking very dry. So um, the gardeners amongst you, and I'm sure our farmers too, will be pleased uh, that we've got the rain just to water everything. And the third reason is, um, <clears throat> as you've probably heard over several of my uh, um, broadcast I've been coughing and spluttering it's not COVID-19 it's hay fever which I've suffered from all my life when I was a child it was um terrible I used to get it so badly that my eyes would swell up and my uh, so I couldn't physically see out of my eyes and my lips would swell up it was a horrible thing but um, I sort of grew out of it in that extremity extreme as an adult but um the pollen has been really high and uh, yesterday afternoon um because we can look out across the hill here. Um, the air quality in one level is much better because there's not a lot of traffic on the roads, but you could see the haze and dust that was coming off the fields and the pollen, and um, that has really been making me cough and splutter. So um, I'm pleased that that's all been dampened down um, too. So uh, yes, nice to see uh, a bit of rain. Uh, good morning, <coughs> Jenny. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, uh, both Marys, Mary Jones, Mary McLeod. Lovely to see you all. So um, yesterday as well, um, uh, I've been doing a scout uh, photography badge. As some of you will know, I'm a scout leader or assistant scout leader with the First Woodcut Scout Group. And um, all the scout leaders have been, um, in a sense, modifying the badges that our young people can do um, and getting them to be done online. And there's some great things. There's, uh, um, <clears throat> unfortunately, the scout page isn't public. You have to be a member of our the, the local group here, but um, it's just fabulous, which what the youngsters have been posting up. They have been cooking, they've been doing arts and crafts, um, they've been doing their photography badge, um, all sorts of stuff <coughs> our young people have been doing with their parents and they've been putting photographs up, which is absolutely brilliant and there's more to come. Um, but over the past couple of days, the <coughs> youngsters have started putting up uh, sending me their six black and white pictures. So um, to get their photography badge, we settled on the project where they have to produce um, six black and white pictures <coughs> on a theme. And um, uh, I put up a couple of sort of YouTube broadcasts about photography and they've been sending them in. Now, what I will do is I 
um, they have been put up onto my website because I do have my own photographic uh, website. So I've created a gallery on that. And so far we've got three lots back. And it's just fabulous what these young people are doing. They've All of them have put real thought into uh, their photographs and their composition and their particular theme. And um, it's really good. And particularly to, to see them doing black and white because one of the things with photography today, you know, we're all photographers which is great <clears throat> you know we have a camera phone uh, we snap away we put things on facebook we put things on instagram uh, we photograph our dinner we photograph ourselves a plethora of photographs um, but it's really good um, as a photographer myself to uh, rather than just click away to just take a bit of time and um, think about the whole creative process of taking photographs and that's what these young people uh, have done. And I really hope they're starting to think about photography in a bit of a different way of how they can use it to tell a story, um, to understand light. And certainly, as I say, after this broadcast is over, I will put the link on the church website to the gallery. Unfortunately, you can't see the scout page, but this is the special gallery I have set up for them. And, um, uh, and that's great. <clears throat> and yesterday I said about creativity, how important I think that is, particularly in this lockdown time to help us with our mental health. And um, if one positive thing comes out from this sort of uh, different and new way of living, I hope that when the sort of floodgates slowly get opened again and the tread wheel of life um, starts to speed up, um, we maybe look back to these days and think, actually, you know, though it was tough, it was difficult, we were fearful, um, there was actually something about, uh, you know, learning to do nothing, um, learning to sit and be still, learning to uh, create something new, cook a new dish, um, uh, paint something, take a photograph, write a poem. And um, I think if we can take that away with us when life resumes in, in a new way after all of this, I think we'll be better people because... I really believe that all of us uh, have a creative instinct and we need to develop that. Uh, and with that, I was a bit ashamed yesterday that um, uh, I didn't realise that it uh, uh, was the feast day of Christian Rossetti, uh, Christina uh, Rossetti. Now, um, the slight one of the differences between the Anglican Church and the Roman Catholic Church, and I've got sort of both their books here, um, they both have the daily... Uh, readings in for the Holy Communion and they're exactly the same in the Roman Catholic book as they are in the um, Anglican book uh, because we all use the common lectionary. What is different is the saints that this book remembers and the ones that this book remembers um, because the Roman Catholic uh, book of course remembers all the uh, traditional Roman Catholic saints that have been uh, canonised um, by popes over the centuries, which is all well and good. We can learn a lot from the lives of the saints. One of the joys of being an Anglican is that, um, of course, we don't canonise people, um, but we do have our own book, and this is called Exciting... Ooh, put it around, I'm back to front. Exciting Holiness. And uh, we do have our own book, and in this book you get almost all of the saints that are in the Roman Catholic book, apart from the very minor ones. Um, so, for example, tomorrow is the feast day of Catherine of Siena, which we'll look at tomorrow, and she is in both books. Um, but what you get in the Anglican book, as Anglicans, um, we have decided that there's lots of other people worthy of a mention because they have helped us and encouraged us on our spiritual life. And I mentioned this a few uh, days ago, for example, Dietrich, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was a Protestant uh, minister who stood up to the Nazis during the Second World War. He is in this book, He's not in the Roman Catholic book because obviously he wasn't a Roman Catholic. But that was the thing, you see. Uh, I only looked at this book yesterday. I looked at the Roman Catholic book yesterday to see if there was a saint. And there wasn't. Uh, and I forgot to look in this one. Shame on me as an Anglican. Because April the 27th is the commemoration of uh, Christina Rossetti, poet. And I'm really ashamed of that because I am a huge fan of the pre-Raphaelite movement, the pre Raphaelite brother and sisterhood. They often say brotherhood, but it's brother and sisterhood. It was a collection of men and women who were incredibly uh, creative. And um, I particularly find 
their artwork <coughs> massively inspiring. Um, the way that they use colour and detail and of course um, Holman Hunt's um, wonderful painting of uh, Christ knocking on the door, you can see a version of that in St Paul's Cathedral, um, is just stunning <coughs> and many other paintings that they did. Anyhow, it was her day of um, commemoration yesterday, I'll just read you a little bit about her. <coughs> Christina Rossetti was born in 1830 and was associated with the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood and Sisterhood, mistake in the book here, of which her older brother Dante was a prominent member. Her elder sister became an Anglican religious, so she became a nun. Christina's own fame rested upon her poetry, which dealt mainly with religious subjects, but also the sadness of unrequited or disappointed love. She was the author of the Christmas, <coughs> Christmas Tide Carol in the, bleak in the Bleak Midwinter, of course, which we sing every Christmas. And she died on this day in the year 1849, this day being yesterday, the 27th of April. So I'm really pleased that uh, um, we've remembered um, Christina, uh, Christine Rossetti. And what I'd like to do is read um, two of her poems <coughs> to you this morning. Um, instead, we'll put Francis to one side uh, for today. Um, but the first one is Promise like pie, Promises Like Pie Crust. Promise me no promises, so will I not promise you. Keep we both our liberties, never false, never true. Let us hold the die uncast, free to come as free to go. For I cannot know your past, and of mine what can you know? You, so warm, may once have been, warmer towards one another. I, so cold, may once have seen, sunlight, once have felt the sun. Who shall show us if it was? Thus indeed, in time of old, fades the image from the glass, and the fortune is not told. If you promise, you might grieve, for lost liberty again. If I promised, I believe. I should fret to break the chain. Let us be the friends we were, nothing more but nothing less. Many thrive on frugal fare, who would perish of excess? Uh, I just think that's a, a lovely poem about clearly a, a, a relationship that maybe didn't quite work out, but in a sense wanting to uh, maintain uh, something of the joy and the specialness of that. Uh, relationship and um, that sort of sense uh, many of us of couples and uh, married couples or married couples find of um, you know living together is a sort of uh, a balance and a mixture of togetherness and separateness the uh, in the book uh, the prophet uh, which uh, talks about marriage it says that um, uh, uh, in marriage we have to be like the pillars of the church or the temple um, uh, close enough together to keep the roof on and um, uh, far apart enough not to let it fall uh, fall in or the other way around yeah uh, close enough uh, to keep the roof up not too far for it to fall apart or we need to be like the strings of a lute or guitar um, close enough together to be to play a harmony and not too close in order to uh, make a sound I think many of us that are <coughs> uh, getting used to spending a lot of time together are learning something about that and then the other one to, today that I th thought I'd share with you, because of course at 11 o'clock today we're being asked to uh, have a minute silence to remember uh, all of those working in the NHS, uh, the front line, who have um, died as a result of coronavirus. Um, so I'll read this poem called Remember um, as also a tribute to them this morning. Remember me when I'm gone away gone far away into the silent land, when you can no more hold me by the hand, nor I half turn to go, <coughs> no, no, I, sorry, nor I half turn to go yet turning stay. Remember me when no more day by day, you tell me of our future that you planned. Only remember me, you understand. 
It will be late to console then or pray. Yet if you go, should forget me for a while, and afterwards remember, do not grieve. For if the darkness and corruption leave, a vestige of the thoughts that once I had, better by far you should forget and smile, than that you should remember and be sad. Uh, I thought that was just a lovely poem. Apologies for reading that. Um, you can see the print there. I need to go to Specsavers, I think, when this lockdown is, uh, is um, uh, finished. So um, on this creative theme, brothers and sisters, I thought what might be a nice thing is if you have a favourite poem, a poem that means something to you individually or as a couple, um, why not send it to me and um, we'll read a selection of poems out uh, over the next few days, sharing each other's poems. Um, if you want to add a little uh, synopsis of why this particular poem is special to you and you're happy for me to share that publicly, um, then please do so as well. But if not, if you just want to send me the poem, um, send me a poem or send me a link so I can look it up. And if you want to email me at canonrick at icloud.com, that's C-A-N-O-N-R-I-C-K at icloud.com with your poem and a little synopsis or a link to the poem uh, then please do so and we'll share some poetry together also if you're a poet yourself if you write poetry i've known many people that write poetry uh, but i know most poets are, are quite shy um, but if you've written some poetry yourself and you'd like me to read it out then please do so and if you'd like it to remain anonymous if you don't want to sort of feel embarrassed by it then that's fine um, just uh, uh, obviously I'll know who it is but I won't share that with anybody else um, and I thought that might just be a nice way of sharing in uh, some of the poetry and verses that we we have at the moment so please send me some poems over the next <coughs> few days into next week and we can share those um, together so I'm just going to read the Bible reading uh, for today. Uh, it comes from John's uh, Gospel, uh, chapter 6, beginning to read at verse 30. The people said to Jesus, What sign will you give us to show us that we should believe in you? What work will you do? Our fathers had manna to eat in the desert. As scripture says, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven. It is my Father who gives you the bread from heaven, the true bread. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread always. Jesus answered, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> um, I like that passage very much and we often associate it when it talks about bread with Holy Communion and it's often uh, read when you celebrate things like Corpus Christi or uh, such like. But I've always been puzzled by those two final verses. Um, he who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never be thirsty. <clears throat> now, of course, I do not want to contradict the words of our Lord and Saviour, but I have found in my own Christian experience um, that following Jesus um, sometimes is a bit like having a Chinese. Those are, um, oh gosh, so I've just said that now in the sense that, and that's made me think, when the lockdown is over, um, I'm either heading to a Chinese restaurant or a takeaway. <clears throat> but you know the old adage, as they say, the, the problem with Chinese food is once you've eaten it, <clears throat> half an hour later you want some more. Um, well, I find that true of the religious life and in a sense that, um, it, that though Jesus completes us and feeds us with everything we need uh, um, spiritually, um, as Christians I think all of us can say we hunger for God, I certainly do. And we talked about those moments a few days ago where you maybe feel, suddenly feel very close to God, God sort of walking uh, beside you and then you can feel quite distant. Uh, and yes, I, I find that um, in my own spiritual and pilgrim journey, there are times when I feel incredibly fed and nourished. And there are other times when I hunger and thirst for God and, and in a sense want to walk along that pilgrim road and... Um, to partake of that again 
<clears throat> in a sense, I think the theology there is that uh, the constant is Jesus. Jesus indeed does give us um, all the bread, everything that we need. Um, the problem is, is maybe we get distracted in our own lives with our own uh, preoccupations, our own busyness or whatever it is. And we forget to point our inner spiritual compass to, to God. Um, and when we do that, yes, we are fed completely. So in a sense, it's not Jesus's failing that we hunger and thirst for God. Um, it's our own. And um, but I think that's a, a, an interesting thing. Um, it is that hunger and thirst for God and the experience of God and the experience of Jesus that certainly keeps me walking along um, that pilgrim uh, road. <clears throat> so on this uh, rainy day and uh, even even we even find beauty in rain, let us just say some prayers uh, this morning. Heavenly Father, on this Tuesday, as in a short while, we will remember and give thanks for those who have given their lives in the service to others. Those who have been working as carers and members of the NHS, who have died as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. We give thanks for their lives. We give thanks for their sacrifice. And we pray, especially at this time, for all of their family and friends as they grieve their loss. May they know that their sacrifice was not in vain. And we pray, Lord, for those NHS staff and carers who today will be at the front line again, will be putting themselves at risk in order to save others. As our Lord said, no greater gift than this for someone to lay down their life for another. We pray, Lord, for this day and the tasks and things that we have to undertake. We pray, Lord, for those who are struggling with the lockdown. We pray for those suffering from mental health issues, from those who are having to live tightly together with, in relationships that are difficult or maybe even violent. We pray, Lord, for all of our, all of our leaders as they try to look ahead to how we will manage and live together. And we pray, Lord, for our young people and children. We pray, Lord, for those who are missing their friends, who are unable to go round to friends' houses and to play, or to go down to the park together and play. We pray, Lord, that this time of trial may soon end, and that we may be able to celebrate afresh the relationships that we have. We ask your blessings on us this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, thank you for being with me uh, again uh, this morning. I hope you have a, uh, a joyous day and um, uh, in a sense that uh, hopefully your thirst and hunger for God is appeased at some point and that... Uh, the Lord reveals himself uh, to you in new ways. And um, as I said, um, if you've got a favourite poem uh, or you've written your own poem and you'd like us to share it, then please do email it to me at uh, canonrick at oncloud.com and we'll share some poems uh, over the coming days. But in the meantime, uh, I hope you have a really uh, a good day today and whatever you're going to be doing. Let's just finish with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Blessings to you all.